Hey everybody, it's Brian Stahl with Tower Broadcasting and we are getting ready for another big Broadway show. Not part of the regular season, but another one that gets to sneak in and I love that the Clement Center does this. And this time it's a one time only show, Saturday, 7.30 and it's the classic Oklahoma. Well, almost. And we'll talk about that coming up. But we have Sasha Hutchings with us. Hi, Sasha. Hi. It's so wonderful to be here. How, now, you've been in town for a while, too, haven't you? We have. I was in town um, for about a week now, almost. And you're, you're, the, you're the big wig in this performance, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm a big wig with big hair. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing Lori Williams, who, of course, is uh, the, the star of the show. One of the stars, obviously. So, okay, uh, if people watched the Tony Awards a couple of years ago, we saw a performance performance from this Oklahoma. How is this different than what we expect from Oklahoma? Well, I think we Oklahoma sort of lives in our minds as this piece of Americana. Uh, you know, we see rolling plains and fields of wheat and big dresses and sort of a very period piece. I think this version, the best way to uh, sort of put it is it's a, it's a very um, recent update, I would say. And so you'll notice immediately costumes and things that feel a lot more familiar to who we are today. And you'll notice, I think the second thing you might notice are the sounds. Um, there's some reorchestrations that are just brilliant and beautiful and sort of update the score in a way that pays a lot of homage to the original score and the original orchestrations, but is incredibly inspired and I think brings a very updated and relevant uh, sound to the musical today. And of course, for people who are not familiar with Oklahoma, what's the story about? The story, well, I mean, you know, in very simple terms, it's about uh, some people trying to go to a box social. They are raising money for a schoolhouse. And so the uh, women have made up different lunches that will be bid on by the men in the town. And if you, you know, the highest bidder gets to have lunch with the, with the lucky lady. Uh, but in this musical, you've got Lori Williams and Ado Annie, uh, who are sort of trapped in, I wouldn't say trapped, but they're in these love triangles, and they've got interest, and they, they, they are these women coming of age and trying to figure out who they want to be and how they want to be in a society and in a state that is about to, um, it's about to get its statehood. Oklahoma is set right in around 1907 when Oklahoma becomes a state and joins the Union. So there's a lot of change going on. So you've got Lori who's sort of, uh, you know, deciding between Curly and Judd, and you've got Ado Annie, who's got Will Parker and Allie Hackham. Uh, they, they're just sort of swirling between these romances, which are very fun to follow. But what you start, start to see are two women who are really trying to establish themselves in the world and how they want to be, and they're doing so with a lot of independence, a lot of gusto, and I think that's something that maybe didn't always come through from the, at least the versions I remember are these two very independent women who are going after what they want and not apologizing for it, um, either one of them. And they're both doing it in very unique ways. And then, of course, you have Ann Eller, who is sort of a very um, central figure of the community. And what I notice, again, about this version is just seeing how strong the women are on this frontier. That's pretty cool. It'll be nice to see a, a modern take on it, but yet it's still the old classic that we, we love and enjoy. It definitely is. You know, none of the words are changed. None of the music is changed. None of the script and score are everything you remember. I think when we revisit, re um, when we revisit a revival or a piece like this, when you, when you come to see it, it says a lot more about how we have changed as people and as a nation and as a culture than the piece itself. The piece is the piece. You know, it says it has a lot within it, and I think we have a lot to learn from it. And I actually love returning to these classic works because, I, again, I think it says a lot about how we have grown um, from, you know, 1943 to now. That's that's a great uh, take on that. I like that. So are you happy to be back out on the road again? Oh, I'm so happy. You know, this is my first tour, so I have actually never been on the road with a tour. But I can tell you I'm very happy to be on stage again. It's been a long time. And it's been a long 18 months with the pandemic. And so we're very, it just feels electric. And I tell everyone, if you have a chance to see a show, uh, whether it's on Broadway or a national tour like ours or even your local theater, do it now because performers have had to, um, you know, sort of quarantine ourselves from the rest from our audiences for the past 18 months. And I think what you see on stage right now, it, it's never happened before. Um, there's, a, there's a very generous offering from off from artists to the public. And I think if I were someone who was even a fan of theater or who had never seen 
you know, theatrical performance, now is the time to do it because this is the first time in history you've ever had this many performers returning to the stage, and we are very, very grateful and excited to be there. We kind of felt that with the first show that rolled through here a couple of weeks ago, Officer and a Gentleman, uh, between I both bet. those on stage and us in the audience are just happy to, to see live performances again. So uh, I'm looking at your uh, your bio here. You you worked in Hamilton, uh, both yes, on stage yes. and on Disney+, Plus, huh? Yes. I was a member of the original cast of Hamilton, so I have been with, I was with the show uh, during its inception when we were uh, sort of you know, in our creation phase, and we were working in a studio and trying to figure out what the thing was and is, and I was with it through its first its opening night, and we recorded the Disney Plus recording, is actually the original cast, and we recorded that in July of, uh, right after the Tonys, so it's such a slice of that show, um, I'm very happy to have been a part of it, and so happy to have that piece of that show, that sort of capture. It's like a time capsule of that original company. I, I do my homework, and I pulled up your IMDb, and I noticed that you've done some TV work as well. And I have to know, did you work with Kristen Ritter at all on Jessica Jones? I did. I did. <laughs> I had a great time working with her. Um, she's such a hard worker, and it was so cool to be on this show. Um, I've been a fan of hers for a long time, and working with her on that show was just so, so fun. So which season were you on? I was on, I believe it was season two. Okay. You know, I'd have to go back. It was a little while ago, but I'll tell you, it was a fun episode because it was an origin story episode. Oh, nice. So we were learning about where her character, like how she began. And so it was sort of set back in 2005, and I was a backup dancer for her sister. uh, And they were out partying and sort of, you know, having, there was a lot surrounding her relationship with her sister. And I sort of got to dress up as a 2005, like, pop backup dancer. It was just the most fun. I was like, these are all of my, like, girl group dreams. That's fun. I also know that you uh, were in Smash. And uh, d- do you like TV or do you like the stage better? Or are they completely different things? They, they are completely different. Um, Smash was fun because it was sort of like this mashup of stage and film. But film, you know, it's a time capsule. It's this thing that lives, and it doesn't change. And I think that's the exciting thing about theater is you can see a show several times, and you'll notice something different. Something di- It will always be a different. It's a living sort of organism. So it's fun to, like, say, like, this, this will only live here in this moment for this show tonight with this audience. And then for film, it's fun to say, you know, oh, well, I'll, I'll be able to remember this and see this from years to come. I'm also doing, I just most recently was on the show Run the World on Stars. Uh, which is a very fun show about women living in Harlem, which is where I live now, uh, where I'm currently based in New York City. And so that's a very fun one that I got to do as well. Um, they're just totally different worlds, but it's a it's a fun... It's a, I like to be in both of them, to be honest. I hear that from a lot of actors as well. Uh, we see them going back and forth from TV to, to working on the stage. And a lot of times we think people disappeared, but they've been working on the stage for all those years. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you on stage on Saturday at 7.30. It's Oklahoma at the Clemens Center. Sasha Hutchings, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. We're very happy to start our tour here. And check it out. Uh, Clemens Center is 607-734-8191 for tickets. You can also find them online at clemenscenter.org. And it's one show only. Don't forget that, 7.30 on Saturday night. Sasha, thank you so much. Thank you. See you Saturday.